did you ever hear that when a husband tells the wife how much he is worth the wife would be reckless with spending money did you ever hear that if you did today i'm going to debunk that myth i call it a myth because it has led a lot of husbands astray. My name is Sandra Ezeji Anyele. I am your marriage foundation coach. I want to welcome all those that have already subscribed to my channel. I want to also plead with those that have not yet subscribed to subscribe to this life-changing channel. I titled today's video, Do Not Hide Your Finances From Your Wife. Today's video was prompted by what happened recently in the city where I live. If you are new to this channel, I live in Abuja, Nigeria. I am saying so because, you know, a lot of times when we tell certain stories, people think that it's something that we read in the newspapers or something that we saw in the internet. The story I'm telling you today is what happened and it happened to somebody I know very well. Now, listen, sometimes when things happen, please try as much as possible to pick the lessons in that story. Do not try to apportion blames because apportioning blames will not solve the matter. Let us now go back to the story. This certain man was hiding his earnings from the wife. Apart from that, this man used his house as a collateral without the wife knowing. And they were living big because the man I'm talking about is well to do. But do you know that this man, after using the house as a collateral, he was not able to pay up his debt. And you know, if you are conversant with what bad policies are, they give you time and when you are not coming forth, they will come and you know take over the house. One day, one hot afternoon, they were in the house and bank officials came. Not knowing what they came for, you know, she welcomed them. Before you know it, they brought out their file. Before you know it, they told her that the house was used as a collateral and that the husband was not able to pay. For that reason, they are going to take over the house. If you are the wife, at this point, what will you do? She was dumbfounded, of course, to cut the long story short. Since the man was not able to pay, the bank eventually took over the house. What becomes of the family? You might want to know. Do you know that this man now had to scatter the family? The wife went somewhere else. She was staying with a friend. The man also went to stay with a friend. Then the children, you know, they were also scattered. Imagine that kind of situation. But this is something that could have been solved if only this man was open to the wife. Now I bring you to what I call being open in your relationship. This is a case of husband and wife. What of a case of a man and a woman who are dating for marriage? When you are dating for marriage, you have to be open to the person you want to get married to because it goes a long way to, to build trust in that relationship. After a while, this woman did not know what to do. What did she do? What she did was she now tried as much as possible to get a one-room apartment and, you know, put the children there. At least let them have a roof over their head. You might not be wondering, how can somebody living in a mansion, so to speak, now go to a one-room apartment to stay? They didn't have any choice. That was the best option left and they had to do it. Would you want that to be your situation? Now I ask you the husband, why will you do such a thing without involving your wife? Why will you do such a thing without considering the consequences it will have on your children? We are doing what we are doing so that people will be aware of the circumstances whereby dishonesty or lack of openness puts people. If you are not open to your partner, it's going to spell doom. A lot of times, the question I asked when I started, I had that story too. Yes, I was told by one of my uncles that a man should not disclose all the things he has because if he does that, the wife will be, you know, careless with spending or that the wife will be reckless in her spending. But as little as I was then, I did not believe that because the notion I had was that a man and a woman coming together, you know, as family or as partners, they should not hide things away from each other. Yes, I wasn't married then, but that was the notion I had. Of course, that was the best thing to do. You are not supposed to hide things from your husband. You are not supposed to hide things from your wife. It is not only finances. Now you might be wondering, what if truly this woman or this wife is a reckless spender? That is why I keep telling people that are married or people that are about to get married to have a discussion. Yes, you might be talking, but you are not communicating. Communicate, discuss this thing because these are things you are going to see when you eventually get married. Sometimes when we give advice, people think that hey, you are married now, you are telling us all this, you know, we might find it difficult to get married. No, when you are dating for marriage, you have to be observant. You have to pay attention. You have to ask the necessary questions. Because if you don't, by the time you enter into this marriage, there will be problems. And you will start disturbing everybody. As coaches, our job is to tell you the right thing to do even before you get married. Then if you're already married and you know there are some mistakes you made in the foundation, you can retrace your step. You can make changes. Don't dwell on it. Don't say because I did not do this when we were dating or I did not do this when we were 
you know, when we were newly married, because my marriage now my marriage is five years, Mom, my marriage is ten years, we cannot do anything about it. You can still amend your foundation. Yes, you can. It's just for both of you to sit down and talk about it. It's just for both of you to think to sit down and say, This is where we have been erring, let us make amends. It is not for one person to do that. Two of you, if you want to sustain your marriage, this is the best thing to do. The woman in question, you can just imagine. The, the psychological trauma she will be going through with the children. You can just imagine it. I'm not going to tell you details of what has been happening, but I just wanted to, you know, to paint that picture for you to know that these things are real. Lack of openness has led to so many mishaps in marriages. Do we need to continue in doing such things when we know that it's already hurting havoc in homes? Now, let me tell you, the society that we are talking about today, the society that we want to be better today, the society that the individuals involved in that society to be good. Do you know it starts from the homes, it starts from family. So it goes to show us that if the family is good, definitely the society will be good. This time around, it is not the church. Because it is from the home, it is from the family, then you move to the church. You know, there's a biblical injunction that said that the man and the woman, they were naked and they were unashamed. What that place is basically teaching us is that the man and the woman, they are supposed to be open to each other. And when they are open to each other, there will not be anything like distrust. There will not be anything like, I'm going to Sokoto and we are going to Lagos. Or, I will tell you that I'm going to Lagos, meanwhile, I'm going to Joss. The wife or the husband will not be in doubt of what you have told him or her. That is just how it was. And it starts from the foundation. So, we are here encouraging people that are coming into this beautiful institution called marriage to be open to one another. Lack of openness has done a lot of it has, it, has, it has wrecked a lot of homes and we should not continue allowing that to happen. It is better you get informed. It is better you know what you are going into. It is better you understand what you are going into in order for that marriage to succeed. Do you know that one of the main purposes of marriage as ordained by God is oneness? And what do we mean by oneness? Oneness means both of you doing things together as one. Both of you doing things together as people that have come, you know, have agreed to come together to fulfill your individual purposes. Marriage is a situation where you sacrifice, you do all the things to help your partner to achieve his or her purpose in life. You are supposed to help your partner. When you people get married, it means that you are no longer the person you used to be. Both of you now together, you have become one. That is one of the purposes of marriage. We encourage people that want to go into marriage to please understand what they are going into. It is not enough to, you know, raise your hand and be so happy. Hey, I've been engaged, I'll soon get married. And all the ashebis in the world, you call them. All the flamboyant things marriage can give you, you do it. We are not discouraging that if you can afford it. But what we are saying is, do not spend all the time preparing for your wedding without thinking about your marriage. Because your wedding is just one day. But your marriage is as long as both of you are, are alive. That is how long your marriage will last. Let us avoid some of the things that will cause our marriages to wreck. Please, let us avoid them. Some of the things that will cause problems in our home, let us avoid them. In my video, if you have not, if you have not seen it, please check it. I did a video on how to avoid marrying someone because of chemistry. You are seeing the red flags, but you are marrying this person because of chemistry. Because those feelings, they will evaporate. Yes, they will. It is that character that you, you, you will stay with. Please don't fall in love with the talent of somebody. For instance, you will see a brother in church. This brother has a very, a very good angelic voice. The brother sings so well that whenever this brother is singing, the heavens will be opened and you know, this is this brother's talent. Please look into this brother's character because character is everything. Don't marry talent. Please fall in love with character, not the talent. Because that talent you are looking at is not the main person. That is like a show off. This is what the person has been gifted with. And in church, this person expresses it. But in the home, you will live with the character. Of course, this person will not come home and be singing for you all day long. That is not why you got married in the first place. So look before you leave. That is my message for today. If this my video has made sense to you, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Share this video. And you can turn up your notification button so that anytime I upload a new video, you'll be the first to know. I love you and I'll see you in my next video.